What is more Canadian than maple syrup? So we have pancakes in the spring, uh, but think about think about how how maple trees are are so iconic to who we are as Canadians. It's on our flag. I, I you know, challenge you to just look around in your environment and see all the places that you find a maple leaf and how embedded that is in our culture. The maple leaf that's on the flag that incorporates um, characteristics of all the different sort of maple leaves from across Canada, which is why it symbolizes all of Canada. The sugar maple itself is what we have to think about first of all when we think about maple syrup production. So the first thing we need is we need um, healthy sugar maples. And so um, healthy sugar maples need a particular kind of environment. You have to have daytime temperatures that go above zero during the day and go below zero at night. And you can't have any really rapid changes in temperatures. So as long as you've got that nice gentle change from daytime to nighttime temperatures, um, the sap will start running up the trees. If you don't have those perfect conditions, either for the trees, or for the sap production, you're not, going to have the, you're not going to have maple syrup. And that's why there's no maple syrup anywhere else in the world, really. Over the last 30 to 40 years, even 60 years, what we're seeing is an upward trend in the temperatures. So that what's happening with syrup and sap production is that it's starting to happen earlier and earlier in the year. So some people are getting sap run in January, which is ridiculous. I mean, it was always March. So kids will know this too. March break is when you make syrup, right? That's it. Now it's way back. So it's way before, you know, spring break. It's way before all of that. And that's really crazy making for the farmers because they don't have the taps in yet. They haven't done any of those things. So they're not ready. With the potential of climate change, we're seeing that the, the um, uh, season coming earlier. But the other really big problem is that variability. Farmers are very, very resilient, a group of people, and so there's some really interesting um, changes that they're making to their production systems to be able to think about what they can do under those circumstances. So um, the old style way, as you can see behind me, we have all of these buckets. And new systems, so when you use the bucket system, you kind of have to wait for the syrup to flow, and then you've got to be up all night checking your buckets, so you're going to have that run at 2 in the morning. You just never quite know when you've got to be on your guard all the time. With the new system, they put lines into the trees. Um, or they still use the spigots, but the spigots are attached to lines, and then all the lines, they're like, they look like, um, just like long tubes, and all the tubes join together into a big holding tank, and then they pump the whole holding tank back to the sugar shack. And so what that then does is that whenever the sap runs, day, night, as much as it runs, or as little as it runs, they can catch every drop. So that's an interesting innovation that has come forward. If we can all change our own behavior a little bit and work on slowing down climate change, hopefully with the adaptations the farmers are doing, the combination of our better behavior as a society plus the combination of what the farmers are doing, hopefully between the two of us, we can uh, figure out a way to keep the sap running um, for future generations. This is an opportunity for us to all do our part. This is an opportunity for us to think about what we do in our daily lives that could affect um, our, our own carbon footprint. Think about what our carbon footprint is, you know. Do you walk to school or does your mom and dad drive you even though you're only a few, few blocks away? Can you, you know, go pick up that, that bag of milk without taking the car out? Can you plant a tree to offset some of that carbon dioxide? Um, what are the little things that you can do? Can you turn off the tap when you brush your teeth? I know they're all little things, but they're all things that we have control over in our personal life. So one of the reasons why we care about, about uh, maple syrup is, of course, we like to eat pancakes and, and it's part of our Canadian culture and all those, those sorts of things. But it's also an important part of our, of our rural landscape. It's a very important um, uh, to the income of farmers and to it's also a spiritual value for our, in Aboriginal communities as well, which is very, very important. And there's lots of uh, financial and economic spin-offs and benefits as well. So the multiple benefits that we get out of, of syrup and sap production is way beyond just a, a, you know, our pancakes. And so we want to look at that whole picture too. Here out at Mountsburg, we're developing a program that uh, Mountsburg is uh, sponsoring uh, called Climate Change SOS, Climate Change Save Our Syrup. And that is going to be this coming uh, fall and winter of 2012. 
and in that program we will be um, sponsoring groups of high school students to come out to the sugar bush, spend a day in the sugar bush thinking a little bit about climate change. We're going to be doing some citizen scientist work out in the bush um, and we're going to be talking about climate change and maple syrup and hopefully making that whole idea of climate change a little bit more real to, uh, to high school students.